Good morning. Welcome to the Gospel of Luke, and we are in Luke 16. Today, verse 27 through 31, we're going to conclude our section on the rich man and Lazarus. We found out it's a parable, and a lot of the pieces don't stand up if you just take them on, on their own, because heaven and hell are not, hell is not a suburb of heaven. Starting in verse 27, then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. So we had the setup in the first portion, and you've got the rich man and Lazarus, and when they die, I think their, their case is is different. It's opposite. Poor guy is getting good things. The rich man is tormented. Now we came to the second part. The rich man had a proposal. Hey, just if, if Lazarus can just dip the tip of his finger into the water and, and, and then give me that a little drop, droplet of water, that'll help me not be tormented. Obviously, this isn't uh, full-blown literal, but that, that wasn't allowed. And now we come to this third proposal. So the proposal he has for Abraham is, okay, you can't, I can't be helped, but I'll tell you what, please help my brother send Lazarus He's died, help him, resurrect him, send him to my brothers, and he'll testify to them, you can't, you don't want to die because this is a bad thing. When you, when you get here, you get judged. And so uh, Abraham will not allow that. And why not? He says, look, if, if one goes through them if from the dead, they'll repent. Abraham says no in the parable. He says no because, you know, they have Moses and the prophets. And we always kind of come back to that. We have, we have the word of God. If we don't hear the word of God, if we can't receive what God has for us here, how then are we going to receive uh, when some, some random person walks in through the door? Hey, one time I was pastoring, and somebody came and said, Hey, pastor, you need to let so-and-so speak here. He's a guest. He's from India. He's been doing resurrections in India. Now, <laughs> I had no evidence that he was resurrecting people in India. Uh, and we're going to put him in front of the church when we don't have any evidence that this is true. Now, it could be true. It could be that there was truth. Truthfully, he was doing that. I, I don't disbelieve. Obviously, in the New Testament, that can happen, but I didn't have any evidence that he was resurrecting people randomly. So, no, I wasn't going to just... God had given me a message to speak that day in my church, and so I wasn't going to have this random person stand up. I had no way to verify that. It would have been quite a... It might have been quite the uh, the thing, though. Yeah, a big, a big emotional experience, people, somebody claiming to raise people from the dead, but without evidence, no, it's not going to happen. That's why I, I preached a sermon that day from the Bible, and we didn't have Mr. Resurrection Guy do that. So, you know, what we have here is the same lesson from Abraham. If somebody goes to them from the dead, that doesn't mean they're going to suddenly all just, oh man, we're going to turn around and repent and change our ways. No, it doesn't mean that at all. And so, he says here in the parable, if, if they don't receive Moses and the prophets, they, they won't receive Mr. Experience Guy or Mr. Guy with a claim not going to receive him. So this is kind of the point of the parables. It comes down to it is the brothers, there's individual salvation here. You can't go back from the dead and help somebody else. Uh, another thing here is that you need to just go by the word of God. That's the ultimate line. Experience, experience might get you part way, but what you really need to do is trust and have faith in God and follow his word. And that'll get you exactly where you need to go spiritually. But uh, Abraham is not going to allow it. And by the way, we don't pray to Abraham or any other person. We only pray to, the, to God. This is clearly a parable, and there's more to say about it, but just we don't want to misunderstand what the scriptures are saying to us here, uh, get the right lesson here, and that is uh, kind of here at verse 31. Go by the Bible. Be true to God. Put the spiritual first. Put anything mammon, whether it's marrying a wife or with money or something you like to eat, put that, that all has to be way down the list, but God is first. And God will bless that spirit, if that's the spirit we are of. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, as we're looking at this parable, we want to get it right. Uh, thank you, Lord, that we've been able to split it up over a couple of days. Hopefully, it's helped us to better understand it, this fascinating teaching by Jesus. May our hearts be right. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. May the God of heaven uh, help you to be right on his side and... You know, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Let's make sure that we're following Jesus humbly and God's blessings will be upon us. His blessings, may they be with you today. And that's our prayer.